Welcome back to the SCAN Pro Streaming Series. I'm Cyborg Angel and today we're going to be taking a look at the different programs you'll need to get yourself live on your channel and start streaming. Plus a look at the great range of Elgato products to help you along the way. First of all, your main program to get connected and one I personally use is OBS Studio. But it's not as simple as just downloading it. There's a number of things that need to be set up. So let's take a look at those settings now. First of all, you're going to want to click the settings button located at the bottom right hand corner of OBS Studio. Uh, you'll then get a window that comes up like this. So first of all, you've got your general tab. That's not really something that you need to change anything on at the moment. You do want to connect your stream and your channel to it specifically though. So if you click the stream tab at the side on the left, at the top here it says stream type. You have streaming services selected as a default, but you've also got a custom streaming server just beneath it. Custom streaming server is if you have your own IP that you're streaming to and maybe a different website or your own website. But if you are using services or a platform like Twitch, you just want to, going to want to keep it on streaming services and select Twitch or whichever other one you might be using that's listed here. In our case, it will be Twitch. For server, you can keep it as automatic recommended or you can select the one that's nearest to you. So usually from my home location, it would be London, UK. So I'd select that. Sometimes if there is issues with the server, you can select the nearest one to you. So for instance, I will every now and then if needed, select Paris. But I'll just put it back on that. And then you're gonna need a stream key. The stream key is from your channel dashboard. So I'm gonna show you how to get to that now. So if you head over to your channel, um, you'll see something like this. This is my channel, so if I click at the icon at the top right hand corner and then click dashboard, you'll get your dashboard up here. This is where you see a lot of the settings and how you set up the stream. You can name your stream, your going live notification and the game category that you're going to be streaming in. If I was to click on settings for my channel, so channel settings just under here, you will see just underneath that, the first one that comes up is stream key. So with the stream key, you can show it. Most of the time, it's just wise to click that copy button. And once it's copied, you've got the key that you're gonna need in order to stream. So if you pop it over here, that's it. That's the stream key set up. Click apply. That's all you'd need to go live, but you wanna make sure you have the right quality and video settings for that as well. So if I click on output, it will then display your bitrate, your encoder, your audio bitrate, and some other options that you may want to change later on. For now, we're going to concentrate on bitrate. So you want to select a bitrate that is going to match with your internet upload speed very well. If you put it too high, yes, you will have a high quality, but it may not come across very well if you don't have the internet to match. So I usually have mine at 6,000 but a lot of people, especially if you're a newer streamer, would start at something like 2,500 or 3,000. And again, just click apply. So for encoder, you have either your CPU or your graphics card, usually that show up. Times 264 is your CPU, but if it starts to be overloaded or you find that your PC can't handle streaming and gaming at the same time, it's always wise to try and switch to the GPU that you're currently using, which is that one for me. If you click over on video, under the video tab, there'll be a base resolution and an output resolution. The, the base resolution is usually set to 1080p and that I wouldn't change at this stage. And the output resolution, you can downscale. So for instance, you're streaming or you're recording at 1080p, but on everyone's streams, they get the highest quality setting option as 720p, depending on their internet. So for output resolution, at this stage, I would keep it at 720p. So there's also a frames per second option and you can select any of these. Usually people stick between 30 or 60. I would go for 30 if I'm doing a VR stream, if I'm doing a normal stream, um, and it's a game that's not that CPU intensive, I'd have it on 60. Um, again, you need a CPU that's gonna be able to handle this. So let's, for this instance, keep it on 60 because we know this PC will. For downscale filter, I wouldn't change this option from the default setting. As a new streamer, you won't need to go into the detail and you won't really notice a difference at this stage. 
So once you've done those settings, you're ready to create a scene and add sources to this scene. I've got one here that I've got a background, a game capture and a webcam too. So I've currently got the background on show. If you want to add any extra scenes or sources, you right click the box and click add. Here's the webcam, here's the game capture and you can have it in the right order by just dragging and dropping where you'd want it. And now that we've learned about how to set up a scene and the sources on those scenes, we're going to be looking at some great products from Elgato, like the Stream Deck, that's going to aid us in making that streaming just a little bit easier. The Stream Deck is fully customizable with 15 LCD buttons. It can help you with things like changing scenes, showing or hiding sources on those scenes, starting and stopping streams, controlling different audio inputs like your desktop audio and microphone, and sending automated tweets to say that you've gone live with the click of a button. As an example, I'm going to demonstrate how this works with Streamlabs OBS, a similar program to OBS Studio, where I've imported my very own scenes for today. As you can see, I'm currently on my starting soon screen, but with the click of a button, I can change exactly what my viewers see. This is especially useful if you're in-game or have another window open and would find it difficult to tab out. You also have the option to add folders to store even more useful shortcuts and commands. And for those streamers looking to get the highest quality on their streams, Elgato has a Camlink, a great product that lets you hook up your GoPro or DSLR camera via a HDMI to your PC letting you stream in higher resolutions and quality than most conventional webcams. Elgato also offer capture cards letting you capture and stream from external sources like a console or dedicated gaming PC. Here we have an external and portable HD60S, which is also capable of capturing games in 1080p at 60 frames per second. And for those really looking to have the ultimate quality stream, the 4K60 Pro lets you capture in full 4K at 60 frames per second. So that was a look at a great range of products from Elgato that really helped take the quality of your content to the next level. But it doesn't end there. They also make this awesome pop-up green screen. That can be used to hide all the mess behind you or seamlessly transport you to look like you're in any environment you wish. If you feel like being at the beach, or maybe skiing, or inside your favourite game. The options are endless. Well, that's it from me. Keep an eye out on all of our socials for more from the Pro Streaming Series, and I'll see you soon.